Hey everyone, I'm Sophia Bush. I am an actress, an activist, and a podcast host. And I thrive off of exciting conversations with trusted sources. And that's exactly what this is. This is Need to Know. The World Health Organization, also known as the WHO, suggests that vaccination prevents between two and three million deaths a year. While we all around the globe await the highly anticipated COVID-19 vaccine, today we are speaking with biochemist, neurobiologist, and antibody engineer, Esther Odukunle, PhD, and asking her everything you need to know about vaccines. Now, we obviously need to talk about vaccines in terms of COVID-19, because that's really on everybody's mind, but I'd actually like to go back to some more simple science and communication what even is a vaccine? Can you walk us through it? So a vaccine is a substance that stimulates your body's immune system to fight against and therefore protect you against a pathogen. And a pathogen is anything that causes disease. Now being naturally infected by a pathogen, let's say a virus, would also stimulate your body's immune system. But getting that immune protection will mean getting the disease, which could come with some pretty nasty symptoms. So the benefit of a vaccine is that it imitates an infection and therefore provides immune protection against a pathological disease. Depending on the effectiveness of the vaccine, it could provide full immunity, which would mean you will not be infected when exposed to the pathogen. Or if full immunity is not possible, it could lessen the severity or duration of the infection. Because COVID-19 is a novel virus, we've never encountered it before. That means we have no natural immunity. There's nothing in our bodies that have created antibodies to fight a pathogen like this. Is that why it can be so fatal to people who contract it? And that's why all scientists around the world are collaborating on trying to find a vaccine as quickly as possible? That's definitely one of the reasons. Um, yeah, as you said, um, our bodies haven't seen this virus before. So if we are infected, you know, some people will have you know really horrible symptoms and in some cases it can be fatal um i think it's important to note as well as we've seen different people react differently to the virus and you know things like you know people having other health issues can definitely cause um worse outcomes do vaccines all work the same way or are there multiple types of vaccines so there are four major types of vaccines. Um, you firstly have what's called whole pathogen vaccines. These can be whole bacteria or viruses or parasites that cannot cause disease because they have either been inactivated with chemicals, radiation or heat, or they have been weakened. These types of vaccines typically produce strong protective immune responses and most therapeutic vaccines have actually fallen into this category, but they can be relatively harder to make or they can take longer to develop. The second type of vaccines that we have are called subunit vaccines. These are components or fragments of a pathogen that the immune system can still recognize and fight against. As you're only using the essential components instead of the whole pathogen, this type of vaccine might minimize side effects. Um, however, including only these components tends to produce relatively weak protective immune responses compared to whole pathogen vaccines. And in such cases, some additional ingredients or proteins are added to give that extra boost to your immune system. The third type of vaccines are called toxoids. So some bacterial diseases aren't caused by the bacteria themselves. They're actually caused by the toxin that the bacteria produces and releases. Therefore, you would want your immune system to protect you against the toxin rather than the bacterium. And the fourth and final type of vaccines are nucleic acid vaccines. So nucleic acids can carry genetic information, for example, our DNA, and they are needed to produce proteins in all living things. So instead of scientists making these proteins in the lab and then injecting them into patients, Nucleic acid vaccines are used. They introduce either the DNA or the RNA that codes for that particular protein from the pathogen into your body. Your body then uses its own cells to read through that nucleic acid and make that specific protein. Once the protein is made, your body can then recognize this as something that it needs to fight against with an immune response. 
These vaccines are newer and presently only a few have been approved for use in animals, not humans. Um, however, they are much easier to develop and manufacture compared to other vaccine types. In terms of the COVID-19 vaccines in development, many of them are nucleic acid vaccines that code for a specific protein on the virus called the spike protein, and um, others are also whole pathogen vaccines. Mm. So can you talk to me a little bit about who is protected when someone gets a vaccine? Because there's a lot of conversation out there about herd immunity, about creating immunity. You just referenced that vaccines can either create immunity or a good enough immune response that you won't get a fatal version of a virus such as COVID-19. So how, how does this sort of larger protection structure work in terms of vaccines? Yeah, well, first of all, you are protected when you get a vaccine. Um, because vaccines mimic an infection, as you said, you can develop immune protection without actually contracting the actual disease. Um, and as has been said, um, depending on the effectiveness of the vaccine, you, can, you could either be fully immune or you can have less severe symptoms. Um, but also what we're hearing about is long COVID, where people who were infected months ago are still experiencing symptoms such as crushing fatigue and lung damage months after. So having a vaccine, even if it doesn't provide full immunity, um, it can still protect you from horrible symptoms caused by the disease. But secondly, other people can be protected when you get a vaccine. If vaccination leads to full immunity, this means even if you are exposed to the virus, your immune system will act fast enough to clear the virus before it has a chance to replicate and cause disease. Can you talk to me about what roles antibodies play in protecting us from the virus and how they fit into the vaccine process? The SARS-CoV-2 virus, which causes the COVID-19 disease, can enter our cells using its viral spike protein that's located on its surface. That's the corona, the crown, right? Yeah. And antibodies that have been isolated from people that have recovered from COVID-19 have been shown to recognize regions of the viral spike protein. Okay, what does this mean? So if antibodies are recognizing the spike protein, this means they will bind to that protein. With the antibody binding to the spike protein, the virus cannot properly interact with the surface of our cells in order to enter our cells. And if the virus cannot enter our cells, it cannot replicate because it needs to hijack our cells machinery in order to replicate. And viral replication is a critical part of how viruses cause infection. And so if antibodies block the virus from entering our cells, this neutralizes the effect of the virus and therefore provides us protection against it. Um, with regard to antibodies and vaccines, most of the COVID-19 vaccines currently in clinical trials will expose our body to this viral spike protein, either through using the protein itself or the nucleic acids that code for the protein. This is to ensure that the antibodies made in response to the vaccine will neutralize the virus by blocking the spike protein. But a key thing I do want to emphasize is that antibodies alone don't fully explain our immune response or the potential duration of our protection against COVID-19. There are other immune cells like memory B cells and T cells that are also important. Um, and we need to spend more time trying to understand what immunity may look like um, after vaccination in these contexts too. Mm. So when we think about that larger context, because as you said, it's not simply about an antibody response. It's about a whole immune system response to a virus like this. So do you have any guidance to give on the question of once we have a vaccine, how long will we need to continue social distancing and masking? Will that be part of the fight against the virus even once the vaccine launches? Number one, I don't think we should expect that the first arrival of a vaccine would mean we are all safe and should stop social distancing and wearing masks. And number two, depending on the vaccines that are available country to country, this would determine whether it's deemed safe to start relaxing any kind of social distancing. How will any anti-vaxxers decisions not to get the COVID-19 vaccine 
impact other people or overall human health around the globe? Yeah, I think it comes in twofold. Um, As we've seen, this pandemic shows that individualism isn't going to help us fight the spread of this virus. So the decision of anti-vaxxers to not take the vaccine can first endanger them themselves as they may be susceptible to the virus and therefore contract the disease, possibly with all the horrible symptoms. But their decision also puts the health and lives of others in jeopardy too, because if they are infected with the virus, they can then transmit that to other people. But along with their decision to not take the vaccine, um, it's also been noted that anti-vaxxers may also share misinformation on vaccines, which could discourage others from taking the vaccine. It's all well and good having an effective and safe vaccine, but if people don't take it, it won't be effective at all. And our hope is that with a vaccine, we will see a drop in transmission of the virus, which will mean hopefully drops in COVID-19 cases. And this will mean that maybe things can start to go back to normal, but all of this can be delayed even longer if when there is a vaccine available, not enough people actually take it. In terms of your work and your expertise and what's happening in the world right now, what would you say in your mind is the one thing you think people need to know? I just want to stress that while there is a lot of mistrust when it comes to vaccines in general, particularly COVID-19 vaccines, um, in terms of the safety and these accelerated timelines for vaccine development, I do want to make it clear that scientists aren't skipping steps to get a non-satisfactory vaccine out there. There is a worldwide demand for an effective vaccine. Countless resources are being focused all at once on providing this. This is a joint effort, and this is not typical of vaccines that have been developed in the past. Mm. It really actually strikes me as quite beautiful what you're talking about, that never in human history has there been a concerted and simultaneous global effort to solve one disease in particular. And I don't know, it makes me feel oddly emotional. And I just really appreciate the the clarification on the facts so that we can all feel hopeful about what all of these scientists like you all around the world are doing to contribute to solving this problem. Thank you. (laughs) You make me emotional now. (laughs) Science is emotional, it's beautiful. Yeah.